it's time to tackle Newton's laws. So we're going to do the first law first, oddly enough. And I really like this name with Newton when you're trying to get up in the morning, but your net force is zero. We'll see why that's funny in a second here. So these, this right here is like two different forms of the same idea. So the idea here is that an object in rest is going to stay at rest unless you give it an external unbalanced force. And what do I mean by an unbalanced force? I mean like a net force. We're going to talk about that after. So some something where you know the forces don't cancel out. So that's why that one right there is funny. But of course, object in motion tends to stay in motion as well. So if something's going in a straight line, let's say you're in space or something going in a straight line. If no other force is acting on you, you're just going to keep going in a straight line. If there's no friction or anything else, you just go in a straight line forever. Now, how is this useful in everyday life? Well, I mean, a cyclist, for example, I just put this one here. Uh, well, because my wife is Danish. Uh, you know, if you're on a bike, for example, and then you, you know, crash into something like this right here, because you're not connected to it. Just think about this. Your bike is going to stop immediately. But what about your body? Well, your body is in motion and it tends to stay in motion. So what happens to you then? Well, then you just go flying. And so you sort of get sent out and ouch, basically. So that's why, yeah, not good for you. Um, so bad for you. So another application of Newton's first law is with a ketchup bottle. I don't know if you've ever seen the show Seinfeld, but I love it like this right here where, you know, um, George Costanza is trying to get the ketchup out because this is actually very much related to what we need to talk about. Look, he's trying to get the ketchup out of the bottle. And do you notice what he's doing? He's actually hitting the bottle up. But if he hits it like this right here, what's he doing? He's knocking because you have to imagine the bottle is one object. And the ketchup is another object. And so by hitting it like this, he's just forcing the ketchup to basically go back into the base of it. So that's lousy. That doesn't work. So what should he do instead? Well, there's actually science. We've, we've solved this. If you take a ketchup bottle, for example, assuming it's not a squeeze one, if it's like a glass one. Look, uh, I mean, I don't have a bottle with me, but imagine my pen right here is uh, the ketchup bottle. Hold it at 45 degrees. Okay, so imagine I'm holding it like this. Now, you want to use Newton's first law to help you. So what do you do? You send it in motion, it's true, but then you stop it like this. So you stop it against your hand. So in other words, my hand against my other hand. So basically like this right here. What's that going to do? Well, it's going to do like the cyclist, where the bottle is like the bike and the ketchup is like the person. So when you stop the bottle, the ketchup wants to keep going right out that entrance, uh, right out the opening. So that's actually a trick for ketchup. Seat belts as well, same idea behind a car, right? That if you're uh, you know, not strapped into the car, then you're two physics objects. There's the car and there's you. And if you're not strapped in, well, then what happens when the car stops suddenly? Well, you keep going. So again, very bad for you. So that's why you should always, you know, buckle up, for example. So what about Newton's second law? Well, that's why I have this one here. It's from Star Wars. May the mass times acceleration be with you. We'll see why that is. Because in this form right here, it's the most common form. Most students know this one right here. But you don't have to memorize it. It's on your data book. Hooray. Okay, so you don't have to memorize this. However, it's worth going over a little bit in detail here. So first of all, I don't like to just call it F. I really like to write it as F net instead. But I mean, technically, then yes, we're going to say F. You know, where F net, for example, equals a net force. And uh, what's that measured in? Well, force is measured in Newtons. And of course, M is equal to the mass, and that's measured in kilograms. We have A, which is the acceleration measured in meters per second squared. OK, so this is really important here. But also, there's another form. Um, this one here goes like this, F equals delta P delta T. And this is also in your data booklet, so you don't have to memorize it. A lot of students try not to use this version because it looks a little bit scary, but I can tell you, you need to be good at that one. Okay, This is also in your data booklet. OK, so what's P? Well, P is the momentum. T is the time. Now, time is measured in uh, seconds. Sure, momentum. We're going to go over that in another video, but it's, uh, well, P equals MV. So M is the mass, so that's in kilograms. V is uh, velocity or speed, so it's meters per second. So then now do you understand why this stupid Star Wars one here is funny? Because maybe the mass times acceleration. Haha, <laughs> that's a force. May the force be with you. <laughs> oh, that's a bad one. Okay, so this is the key exam tip here for this. So an unbalanced force, in other words, F net, that causes an acceleration. I could not stress this enough. This is like the, the key thing here is whenever you have unbalanced forces, in other words, you have you add up all the forces in a free body diagram and they don't all cancel out, that means that object will accelerate. That's the key piece here. Really, everything just kind of bases on this. 
And it's a really good idea to know how to go from those two different equations. So f equals delta p delta t. It's nice to know how to get from there uh, to this form, which is uh, f equals ma. So how do you do that? Let me show you. So we first start off with, uh, well, let's write it down. So delta p. Okay, well, delta p delta t. What is p? Remember, p equals mv. That's the equation for momentum. So that means then that we could say, it depends if you want the mass to be changing or the velocity to be changing, because a change in momentum means one of these two is changing. Let's assume the mass is constant in this case right here, and let's assume then it's the velocity changing. By the way, it could easily be the mass changing, but let's just say it went like this right here. Do you notice that I'm just rewriting delta p as m delta v? See that? That's what I've done there. And if I keep going then, we just have to recognize then, well, hey, hold on a second. Um, what's delta v delta t? Do you remember that actually a change in velocity over a change in time, that's an acceleration. So that's how we get to f equals uh, m times a. So do you see we can start with the momentum one and end up with the uh, mass times acceleration one. Hooray! So here we have an example. I really like dinosaurs, so sorry. Uh, but I'm pulled by a velociraptor, let's just say. So the raptor's force on me is 52 newtons to the right. OK, so that means if I'm going to draw a free body diagram, I should have some sort of arrow going to the right. And it's 52 newtons long. And then there's a friction force that's 12 newtons to the left. So that means, acting on this right here, there's going to be 12 newtons this way. And this is the center of mass, let's assume. All right, if that's the case then, and I know my mass here, if I'm initially at rest, how long will it take me to travel one kilometer? At first, it seems a little bit tough, but I mean, step one is going to be to figure out, hey, let's, let's actually figure out the net force. That's what we're going to find here. So let's find F net, the net force, the resultant force. Well, that's going to be the 52 newtons to the right minus the 12 newtons to the left. So what's 52 minus 12? Well, that's 40. So if I do 40 newtons, it's important though to know the direction. So right is bigger than left, therefore this will be 40 newtons to the right. That's going to be important because now I know which way I'm going to accelerate. There is a net force, there's an unbalanced force of 40 newtons. That's going to make me accelerate. Okay, great. Well now if I know that right here, this right here makes me accelerate. And if I'm going to accelerate then, well then I'd better use F equals MA. All right, so let's figure out what my acceleration will be. It's related to the net force. So do you see how now I can just rearrange this right here? So A equals F over M, you know, the net force. And so the net force is 40 newtons. Okay, fine. Divide that by the mass. The mass is 75 kilos. And since everything has proper units, then I'm not going to bother writing them. Um, and I'm going to need my calculator here. And I'm just going to do 40 over 75. Okay, so let's do that and see what we get here. Okay, so, oh, thanks, calculator. I wanted to do, there you go. So 0 0.53 repeating. And that's going to be in meters per second squared. So that's going to be important. That's a good piece that I needed. Now, why is that? Well, because now, because I'm accelerating, do you notice this is an accelerated motion question? Look, I've got a constant acceleration. Therefore, I can use these SUVAT equations, you know, these, these uh, accelerated motion equations. So let's actually do that. So I'm going to go, okay, S, U, V, A, T. And remember, S is the displacement, U is the initial speed, V is the final speed, A is acceleration. And do I know any of these values? So I've got S. S is my displacement. That's how far I travel. Well, how far do I go? Do I go uh, just do I just put in a one? No, I don't. This is kilometers, so I got to put in a thousand meters. All right, u u is the initial speed. Initial speed. Well, I'm initially at rest, so it must be zero here. What's the final speed? I don't know. I actually don't care. This one here for a, I'll put in zero point five three. I mean, repeating, and then t is actually what I want. So now let's go find us an equation that has t in it that doesn't have a v. So I think we should use this one right here, right? S equals ut plus one-half at squared. And if I do that, let's just put in all the numbers then. So, um, well, first of all, u is zero. That's nice. That made this equation easier. I'm solving for t, which is good. So I can put the two over to the other side. That's 2s. I divide by a. So I have 2s over a. That equals t squared. So that means t must be then plus or minus the square root of 2s over a. However, I don't care about negatives for uh, time because time shouldn't be negative.
So that means that I'm going to end up with time is going to be just uh, 2 times the displacement, which is 1,000. Divide that by the acceleration, which is 5,3, or 0.53, I mean. And do the square root, and away I go. So I'm going to use my trusty calculator for that one. I think that's a good idea. And so I'll just do a square root of 2,000, because that's what 2 times 1,000 is. Divide that by the answer. And I can actually just call up the whole answer. That way I have all the decimals of accuracy. So I've got 61.237, let's say. Okay, so that means then if I want to use two significant figures, because that's the least that I'm given right here, I can say therefore that t equals then approximately, well, 61 seconds. So it'll take me 61 seconds then to go one kilometer. Uh, that's like, it'll take me a minute. So that'll be pretty rough here if I'm actually just being dragged along like this. But there we go, so we've solved this one question. And finally, we have Newton's third law. And the third law says every action has an equal and opposite reaction. That is the piece you need to know. So what do we mean by action and reaction? These are forces. So this is a force. This right here is a force as well. Okay, so these are here all forces. So here's an exam tip right here. So action-reaction pairs, they're important. You could actually be asked, you know, which one is an action pair. So... It's important to know that it has to be the same type of force, has to be the same magnitude. In other words, if you push something, it pushes you back. It has to be opposite directions. So if one pushes this way, it has to be the opposite and it has to be on different objects. In other words, if two different forces act on one object, they're not action-reaction pairs. So if they're acting for that, then it won't be that. That's why I put this in here. My physics process memes are improving every week. Why is that? You know, Isaac Newton, he slaps the roof of the car. Technically, then the car also slaps him. That's also why, like, you know, if you punch someone, you know, or punch a punching bag, for example, it still hurts your hand. Why is that? Well, because the bag technically hit you too. Or like if you hit, get hit by a train or something like that, or you, you know, run into something, you know, the, the two of them actually feel the, the force. It's just, well, obviously, we don't want things to happen to us. We get dented easier. So on a skateboard, for example, if I push to the left, let's just say I'm pushing, I'm standing on a skateboard like this, and I give a push to the left, I push against the wall, what happens? Technically, the wall pushes me to the right. Well, so that's how you can end up you know, moving to the right. Weirdly enough, same thing as jumping. If you think about jumping, think very carefully. If you're going to jump, people say, yeah, I just go up. You don't actually. Think about what your legs do. You lean down, and then you push hard down with your legs, and then you end up going up. It's a bit counterintuitive, right? Most people don't think about jumping, but this is technically what happens. You push down against the ground, therefore the ground pushes up against you. And that's why you go up. You push down, you end up going up. Same thing with rockets. I just put this awesome one here of a cat. But same kind of thing with a rocket, right? If you're sitting in a rocket, what happens? Well, you throw a bunch of stuff one way, and what happens to you? You go the other way. You get a force the other way. It doesn't matter what it is. You could be throwing out nachos out of the rocket, let's just say. You threw enough nachos, well, if there's a force going you know, out, then there's going to be a force in the opposite direction.